Welcome to TSAT. In the last session, we were discussing about the topic of inflation. So we discussed about the different terms related to inflation. What is inflation? The phenomenon of rise in price level, and then deflation, fall in price level, and then disinflation, fall in rate of inflation, reflation, stagflation. Okay, when the economy experiences stagnate. I mean, any economy that has experiencing a multifold problems like unemployment, rising unemployment, slowdown in the growth of the economy, and then the rise in price level. We call the concept as stagflation. And later we discuss about the rates of inflation based upon the rate at which the prices are increasing over a period of time. We define about different types of inflation like creeping inflation, trotting inflation, galloping, hyper. I mean, right now you know the case of Sri Lanka. What's happening in Sri Lanka, isn't it? It's the best example of what okay about hyperinflation or what you call galloping inflation. Okay, and recently Turkey experienced it, and ten years back Zimbabwe experienced it. And then we discussed about the different types of inflation based upon what drives the prices: demand pull inflation, cost push inflation, structural inflation, or built-in inflation. Later we discussed about the consequences or the effects of inflation on the economy. How does it affect the common man? Isn't it? How does it affect the financial institutions? How does it result in increase in government expenditure? And how does it result in increase in borrowings of the government of India? Isn't it? Now let's go ahead and try to figure out since inflation has a very big, broader impact on the economy. It will hurt the prospects of growth of an economy. Now let's try to figure out how to measure the inflation because if inflation is so dangerous, generally it is said inflation is the public enemy number one. So if inflation is so dangerous, it would hurt everyone in the economy. It's very much okay required to contain the rates of inflation. So to contain the inflation, we need to measure the inflation. So in this session, we'll be discussing about the various measures of inflation and the first and foremost measure of inflation that I already discussed is what is using GDP deflator. So how do you measure the GDP deflator? Divide the nominal GDP with real GDP, and what is nominal GDP? GDP measured at current market prices. Real GDP is the GDP measured at constant prices or base year prices. And the rate of change in GDP deflators. That's how you calculate GDP deflator of n minus GDP deflator of n minus one divided by GDP deflator of n minus so multiply by 100 gives the rate of inflation of course this is the simplest way of measuring inflation but in general many times you might have come across this is not the very routine formula to compute inflation okay when it comes to policy making we as of now compute inflation using consumer price index which we'll be discussing in a couple of minutes but why not gdp deflator if you have noticed the fact when it comes to gdp deflator we are trying to account the value of all goods and services produced i mean we are dividing nominal with real gdp and what does nominal real gdp account to they happen to account all the goods and services produced in the economy but do you really think that persons we people are worried about the change in price of every commodity in the economy how many of us are worried about change in prices of four wheelers like okay luxury automobiles or any luxury services we people are bothered about the change in price of certain basket of commodities we are not bothered about change in price of every commodity in the that we are producing isn't it we are only concerned about change in price of certain essential basket of goods So that's the basic reason. Since GDP deflator is a very broader index, it is often okay. It's very rarely used to tackle the inflation or to measure the inflation for the sake of taking any policy decision. So now let's go ahead with the second common measure of inflation that is using wholesale price index. So WPI stands for wholesale price index, and I guess you are aware of the fact that an index number. is simply a statistical measure that helps in understanding how a set of variables behave i mean if you want to look at a given basket of goods and services whether this basket of goods and services on an average experiencing a rise in price or fall in price so one common feature with respect to all this basket of goods and services is a price is that price level for all this basket is it rising or is it falling that particular statistical measure that helps in understanding how a certain basket of goods are experiencing change in price is what we call as an index number wholesale price index okay and how would you define a wholesale price index wholesale price index is simply a statistical measure that helps in understanding how a certain basket of goods only goods not services as of now so how a certain basket of goods experience rise in prices in the wholesale markets so what's the government doing it has simply collected a certain basket of goods that people are bothered about in general 
and who decides it the government of india once in a while appoints the committee and it happens to keep on revising the basket and i don't really think we need to worry about this because we have a really less short span of time so what we will be discussing is rather than discussing about the committees you just keep it in mind it is simply a basket so the government is in the name of wholesale price index tracks the change in price of a certain basket of commodities whether this basket of commodities in the wholesale markets okay is it experiencing a rise or fall now let's say if the wholesale price index of this certain basket of commodities in a particular year or in a particular month is 100 and the same index number the next month has gone up to 130 So, what does the index number going from 100 to 130 specify, or what does it signify? It does mean a basket of goods and services. Okay, if you require 100 rupees to purchase a certain basket of goods and services, when the index number goes up to 130, it does mean you need a 30 rupees extra. It does mean you need right now 130 rupees to purchase the same basket of goods and services. It does mean there is a 30% rise in prices of goods and services. So that is how an index number helps in understanding. the rate of increase in prices of goods and services and when it comes to the basket of goods and goods that we are tracking as part of wholesale price index this basket has been given a different weightage and around 22.62% as of now 2011 12 base year we have around 22.62% of the basket of goods or the weight is given to this basket is what is consisting of primary articles primary article has been the mostly the essential commodities that we would be using on a day to day basis the second is the fuel light okay and then lubricants fuel and power category like electricity and all these things okay and then you have this petrol and other parts the third happens to be having the major weightage that is approximately 64.5 that is okay consisting of manufactured products so that's how i just want you to make a notice that the wholesale price index doesn't consider the change in prices of services or this basket doesn't include any services so what's the government doing in the name of wholesale price index it happened to choose a certain basket of goods and has given a certain weightage out of which the maximum weightage goes to manufacturing next comes the primary articles and tracks the change in price of this basket of goods in the wholesale markets and as of now this wholesale price index and both consumer price index these indices are measured on a monthly basis on a monthly basis which again i will be explaining when it comes to consumer price index and who measures coming to who happens to track the inflation computed based upon wholesale price index it is the office of economic advisor department for promotion of industry and internal trade this is the organization that is responsible to compute inflation using wholesale price index coming to the next index okay the problem why okay with wholesale price index is one it tracks the change in price of only basket of goods second it is tracking the change in price of these goods in the wholesale markets but we people generally happen to access retail markets we consume goods and services from retail markets and in india there is a large scale difference between wholesale and the retail markets and that's the reason compared to wholesale price index the government of india and the rbi together has decided it would be better to track cpi based inflation or retail inflation okay so coming to the next most important measure of inflation that is what is called cpi consumer price index based inflation So as of now in India we measure three different indices CPI for the urban people CPI for the rural people and CPI consumer price index for combined okay so prior to 2011 12 the gov okay, we used to have CPI for industrial workers CPI for urban non manual employees and agriculture labor so rather than this as of now we do compute consumer price index for these three categories one is for urban rural and combined So when it comes to the consumer price index, you have this particular list of items that I have, okay, that you could see, and the weightage is given, okay. If you look at the consumer price index, around forty-five point eight six. I mean, major weightage of consumer price index goes to food and beverages, and then it includes pan, tobacco, intoxicants, clothing, footwear, housing, fuel, light, and miscellaneous group, summing up to the weightage. So that is how when it comes to consumer price index, very similar to wholesale price index. It's again a measure, a statistical measure. that tracks the change in price of certain basket of goods and also services certain basket of goods and services okay and where is the prices tracked in the retail markets so that's the difference between wholesale price index and consumer price index and one more thing i just want you to notice the fact is the basket of goods and services for which we are tracking the change in prices so when it comes to wholesale price index the basket is different coming to consumer price index so we track a different basket of goods and services with all together different amount of weightage given to this consumer price index and how would you compute inflation using these indices the very simple logic is simple let's say if it is a consumer price index what we do is we simply take the consumer price index of this month 
okay the current month consumer price index of the consumer price index of the same same month of the previous uh, sorry we take simply look at the change in the consumer price index of uh, okay this previous month divided by the consumer price index uh, of the i mean when i say previous month it has been okay let's say we are right now in the month of august let me make it clear with respect to it okay so keeping this aside what i would like to convey the fact is that the inflation using wholesale price index and consumer price index are tracked on a monthly basis i mean we compute the indexes on a monthly basis so we compute for the month of june july august every month we compute the index number we compute the index number okay and this particular inflation computed using these indices are announced by the government with a lag of not more than a month that's mean let's say this is the month of august so july inflation is announced before the 14th or 15th of the month of august and this is done on a regular basis so when i simply say okay so let's not worry about this when i simply say let's come on to the point when i say the month of july the inflation rate of 6% using consumer price index it does mean the month of july 2022 has experienced an increase in price of the basket of goods that we have considered in the previous slide by 6% compared to the month of july 2021 so that's the basic reason when i say okay when we are computing the retail inflation we take the current month and the same month of the previous year i mean july of this year with the cpi value of the july month of the previous year and that's how we happen to track the rate of change in prices using consumer price index got it so that's the reason i already made it clear whenever we track this inflation we compute on a point to point basis though we do it on a regular basis so similarly next month for the august we do compute the consumer compare consumer price index of 2022 with consumer price index of 2021 so compare to the same period of previous year by what level the prices have gone up that is how we do it on a regular i mean on a monthly basis and we end up computing inflation on a monthly basis using both wholesale price index and consumer price index with or with a lag of not more than a month that's mean the month of july inflation would be announced by second or third week of august that's how it happens coming to the consumer price index okay who calculates the inflation based upon the consumer price index or what we call retail inflation is the minister of statistics and program implementation is the one which is responsible to compute this retail inflation okay so before going ahead with other measures of inflation other terms related to inflation let's look at certain initiatives taken by the government of india to contain inflation in the recent past generally one common way of containing inflation when the inflation is of demand pull inflation when the inflation is of demand pull inflation the best way of containing this demand pull inflation is by reducing demand and how do you reduce the demand by discouraging people to spend money and how do you discourage people to spend money by encouraging people to save money and how would you encourage people to save money or discourage people to spend money by increasing the rate of interest and who could increase the rate of interest rbi through its monetary policy this is the simplest way but imagine if the inflation is because of supply shock shortage okay it's a cost push inflation in such case the initiative taken is not by rbi mostly it is by government of india to contain inflation so let's say there is a severe increase in prices of some food grains so what do you think the government could do it could impose the ban of export let's say the government for a temporary period of time could ask the okay people of this country i am simply imposing a ban export of let's say wheat export of rice so that large amount of wheat and rice would be available in the country similarly it could impose a limit upon the stocks that these traders maintain it could also ease the restrictions on imports okay so the government could simply give them free hand to restrict okay to uh, encourage more and more imports similarly the government could incentivize farmers to cultivate certain amount of type of food grains isn't it so government could also encourage creation of buffer stocks okay and one simple example is government also has create okay made certain amount of certain kind of understanding memorandum of understanding with mozambique in the recent past it's not okay, of course it's been almost one year so anything the government does to increase the supply to contain the supply shock inflation okay so the reason why i have listed all these initiatives is to let you understand inflation is not only contained by the rbi sometimes when the inflation is mostly of cost push supply shock when the government takes a very okay some great initiatives to increase the supply of the respective goods and services for which the okay for which the prices are going up by simply looking for various alternatives so this is how the government also takes initiatives to contain inflation beyond rbi okay which increases the rate of interest to contain 
demand pull pressure. And the other most important inflation measure of inflation is producer price index. And how is producer price index different from the wholesale price index and consumer price index? So, if you look at in both these cases, wholesale price index, consumer price index, we are only tracking the rate of change in prices of these goods in the market. I mean, we are looking at the impact upon the consumer, impact upon the consumer. So, what exactly is the burden upon the consumer? Because we are tracking the change in price of these commodities in the markets, which includes the tax component too. But when it comes to producer price index, in a way we are trying to figure out the rate of change in cost of production. We are trying to figure out rate of change in cost of production. I mean the rate of change in the factors of production. By what rate the factors of production are experiencing the change in cost. So, it helps in understanding the rate at which the cost of production of various goods and services in economy is increasing. If the cost of production is increasing, let us say if the rents in the okay, is increasing, if the wages, interest, profit margins are increasing, it does mean the overall cost of production of goods and services is increasing. By that logic, we could conclude the fact the market price of goods and services might also tend to increase. So, producer price index in a way could be defined as an index that tracks the change in goods and services excluding tax component or at the factory prices, I mean before they comes out of the factory. So, in a way we are trying to understand from the dimension of a producer. So, the burden upon the producer and by what rate it is increasing when it comes to production of various goods and services. That is the significant difference between a survey, okay, wholesale price index, consumer price index and then coming to the producer price index. And lastly, we have this one more index called service price index. On an experimental basis, the government of India that is Office of Economic Advisor, Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade. This is what we discuss when it comes to wholesale price index. It is the same department which also measures the inflation based upon wholesale price index. So, as of now also tracking the change in prices of various services like we have railway service price index, postal service price index, banking service, air service, post service, insurance business service telecom services, security transaction services price index. So, we do also have an index that is also tracking the change in price of various services. So, we discussed about GDP deflator, wholesale price index, consumer price index and then producer price index and now we discuss about service price index. Okay. So, before concluding it, let me also make it clear with respect to the various terms related to inflation. So, as I already made it clear, inflation in India using consumer price index is computed on a monthly basis with a lag of not more than a month. Got it? At the same time, okay, inflation computed by taking all categories. Let us say you remember I happen to segregate all this basket into primary articles or essential goods and then fuel, light and lubricant and then the manufacturing goods, isn't it? So, inflation computed by taking all these category of goods and services is generally what we refer using a term called headline inflation using a term called headline inflation and inflation excluding food and fuel category. If I remove the component of food and fuel category from the entire headline inflation okay, or inflation computed excluding these two categories of goods that is food and fuel category is what is referred as a core inflation is what is referred as a core inflation that is the second term okay, headline inflation and okay, core inflation. The third most important is skewflation. You might be heard about this term called skewflation. Imagine the inflation in the economy is driven by any of these categories, either the because of steep price in food prices or fuel prices or certain basket of manufactured goods, it drives the inflation rate too high. In such case, we call such kind of inflation as a skewflation. And let me also define one more term that has become very popular in the recent past, what we call as a shrinkflation. Shrinkflation is a phenomena wherein the prices might not change, but the quantity or volume or simply the size of the good keeps changing to adjust for the change in price levels. Let us say, okay, in good old days, you used to get a chocolate for a certain chocolate for 10 rupees. A certain chocolate bar for 10 rupees. Maybe those days for every 10 rupees, you might be getting some 20 gram chocolate bar. You could see in the market, the same chocolate bar with the same brand name is still available at 10 rupees, but what changed is for 20 gram chocolate rather than 10, 20 gram chocolate bar, right now they would only be offering you 10 gram chocolate bar. So, it does mean price they maintain same, but the okay quantity has come down. That happens to shrink and that is a very basic reason we call such kind of phenomena as a shrinkflation. So, these are the various measures of inflation. 
So, having seen how inflation would have an effect on all economic agents. And let me also take the opportunity to explain what exactly is an economic agent. Until unless you are clear with this, you will not be able to understand the various aspects better. What is an economic agent or what is an economic unit? So, an economic agent, let us say I said households, I have been referring investors, I have been referring as government, I have been referring as financial institutions, trade. Generally, whenever we use a term called economic agent, so anything that could influence the economy or anything that could be influenced by the economy, we refer as an economic agent. Similarly, you remember I said the economic well-being of a nation is defined based upon the economic activity, based upon the economic activity that takes place in the country, economic activity that takes place in the country. So, what is an economic activity? Anything that has a value and a price attached is what we call as a economic activity. So, whenever you have been asked to define or simply explain the impact of any aspect, okay, anything upon the economy, the best thing is that you need to list out the economic agents like who are the economic agents in the economy? Households and we understood how inflation would have an effect on the households and is the government of India an economic agent? Yes. Okay. Is the trade of a country economic agent? Yes. Is the financial institutions? Yes. And are the investors or producers of various goods and services? or economic agents, yes. So, we will just simply list out the impact upon inflation or the price rise upon all these economic agents. And since inflation happens to have an impact upon all these economic agents, it is very much necessary to tackle this inflation. So, who happen to tackle this inflation? Ideally, it is the okay, government of India and the RBI. Okay. And I think you all know the fact about the monetary policy framework agreement that has been signed by the RBI and government of India, wherein as of now in India, the, okay, the RBI and government of India has made an agreement where RBI is being mandated to maintain inflation that is a retail inflation with a range of 4 plus or minus 2 percent, with a range of 4 plus or minus 2 percent. So, it has been the deal between, I mean which has been again revised in the month of okay, April 2020, the RBI has been mandated to maintain inflation within the range of 4 plus or minus 2 percent. This means, okay, the minimum rate of inflation should be 2 percent and the maximum rate of inflation should not go beyond 6 percent. So, I think you might have noticed the fact the government itself is emphasizing the RBI. You need to ensure the minimum rate of inflation should be 2 percent. I mean, it should never be less than 2 percent. Do not ensure, okay, do ensure that it should be minimum of 2 percent and it should never cross 6 percent because anything less than 2 percent would disincentivize the producer. Because imagine a scenario where the prices of goods and services remains constant or they does not change. Obviously, none of the producer would have an incentive to produce more goods and services. Similarly, if the prices of goods and services keeps on increasing beyond 6 percent, I mean more is the increase in cost of living or more is the increase in cost of goods and services that decreases consumption. Henceforth, Okay, keeping in the interest of producers and consumers, the our government okay, has mandated RBA to keep the inflation within the range of 4 to 4 plus or minus 2 percent, that is mean 2 to 6 percent. So, if the RBA failed in containing inflation within this particular range of 4 plus or minus 2 percent for more than 3 quarters, the RBA has been expected to give it in writing explaining the reasons why RBA has failed in containing this inflation. So, that is how the government made RBI more responsible or okay to contain inflation. In fact, inflation targeting has been given the major okay priority when it comes to RBI making any monetary policy decision. So, if you are regularly following newspapers, you have been aware of the fact for the past 2-3 months, the RBI is in a business of keeping the inflation rate, sorry, keeping the interest rates very high. So, you might have noticed in the past 3 months, the RBI went on increasing the repo rates why is the RBI increasing repo rate or what we call as a policy rate is simply to discourage people spending more and more money or discourage people to go for taking more and more loans okay? and rather at the same time in a way increase or incentivize people to save money by disincentivizing spending money. So, that is how the RBI in general tends to contain inflation by making money tight or what we call as this policy of RBI making money tight or increase the interest rates to contain inflation is what we call tight monetary policy, contractionary monetary policy or dear money policy. Okay? So, having seen how inflation is bad and how RBI controls the inflation, now let us go ahead with the next topic of discussion that is going to be monetary policy. And I do not mean to say that it is only RBI that is going to play an active role in containing inflation. Like already happened to give you certain examples wherein the government of India sometimes does 
play a proactive role in countering inflation if it is mostly of a supply shock inflation. But in general, the inflation targeting or inflation control in most of the democratic countries like India, United States, you might have noticed the fact that the major responsibility to contain this inflation, mostly of demand pull inflation, is left to monetary authorities. And in India especially, okay, who takes the responsibility? It is the RBI who contains this inflation. And how does RBI contain this inflation? By going for a tight money policy. So the next topic of discussion that we will be having is a monetary policy. Okay, so we'll be discussing about. So this is how the government of India happens to contain inflation. And when it comes to monetary policy, how would you define a monetary policy? We'll define the monetary policy, the objectives of monetary policy, and how okay RBA in reality would help in containing inflation. And not only contain inflation, RBA would also play a very proactive role in boosting okay growth in an economy. In boosting growth in an economy. So, what does simply RBA does in the name of monetary policy? So, RBA simply influences the supply of money. It either increases the supply of money or decreases the supply of money. Because in India, when it comes to altering the supply of money, okay, I mean changing the supply of money, it is a prerogative of RBA. So, henceforth, RBA either could increase the supply of money or RBA either could decrease the supply of money. When supply of anything increases, what happens to the value of it or the price of it decreases. So, when RBA goes for increasing supply of money, what happens to interest rates? They decreases. When RBA goes for decreasing supply of money, what happens to the value of money or cost of money? That is interest rates that increases. So, and you know the consequences. When interest rates are cheaper, people would be happy to borrow. Okay. So, the credit offtake would be high. That means credit supply would be high. When RBA increases the so decreases the supply of money, thereby resulting in increase in interest rates, what happens to the offtake of credit or supply of loans? I mean, people would not be interested in taking loans because at higher interest rates doesn't make sense borrowing and spending, and that results in offtake of okay falling sub falling credit, and as a result, this results in contraction of demand in the economy. Whereas in the previous case, that results in boosting the demand in the economy. Henceforth. The first one, this is what we call expansionary policy because it results in expanding the demand in the economy. The second one is what we call as a contractionary policy because it helps in the, or it results in contracting overall economic activity. And this is what we will be discussing as our next part of discussion. Okay, Next session would be monetary policy and we will be discussing about how in reality RBA achieves these so called objectives and what exactly is the concept of change in money supply and what is the consequences and the impact on the economy is what we will be discussing in the next session. Thank you. Thank you.